Hello and welcome to GCSE Infection Response Part 2. This is Mrs. Clastomira. We are currently on Lesson 6. What are bacteria and how are they transmitted? What examples can you name? So for this lesson, the title is Lesson 6 Bacteria. Our keywords this lesson are bacteria, plasmid, toxin, salmonella and gonorrhea. So by the end of the lesson you will know what all of those mean. So if you could start off by completing the knowledge check questions please and if you can pause the video whilst you do that. So let's go through those then. Question one. Define the term microbe. So a microbe is a microorganism. Question two. State the two organelles of a virus. That would be the capsid and plasmid. Question three. State the average size of a virus. So a virus is approximately one one thousandth of the size of a bacteria or approximately 20 to 500 nanometers. And we represent nanometers with Nm. Question four, identify how a virus makes you feel ill. Well, the virus replicates inside the cells of the host organism, and then those cells then burst uh, because the virus destroys them, and it's that bursting that causes the symptoms of illness. Question five, state where a virus replicates. So it replicates inside the cells of the infected organism, also known as the host. Question six, state a symptom of both measles and HIV. So both of them have flu, uh, flu-like symptoms. So that would be a fever in particular, which is a very high temperature. Question seven, what organism does TMV infect? TMV stands for the tobacco mosaic virus and it infects a wide variety of plants. Question eight, define the term pathogen. So a pathogen is a disease causing microbe. So make sure that you've marked all of those to indicate whether you got them right or wrong, including crossing them if you got them wrong or if you did not answer the question. Make sure you put in any corrections that you need to make as you went along and give yourself a score out of eight. So if you've got four or less, then you really need to review the previous questions, uh, sorry, the previous lessons before resuming this lesson because we've actually answered many of these questions before and we should know that we'll be getting very close by now. If you've got more than six out of eight, then you're doing exceptionally well. Well done. So by the end of the lesson today, we will be able to know what a bacterium is. Bacterium is the singular for bacteria. Okay, and know some examples of bacteria and how to treat them. So moving on to the structure of bacterial cells. So bacteria are prokaryotic cells. So all types of creatures and organisms that are alive on this planet are categorised into two different types, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So prokaryotes are um, cells or organisms whose cells lack a nucleus and other organelles. So they're very, very simple organisms. Okay, so very simple organisms with no nucleus or organelles, other organelles. So they consist of a cell wall and a cell membrane, as well as the cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance inside the cell. 
they do not have a nucleus. Instead, they have a free-floating loop strand of DNA within the cytoplasm. So it's not contained within a nucleus, okay? It's just loosely lurking around in the cytoplasm. And so this is our loop of DNA here, and it's this long structure that wiggles around. You can also have small rings of DNA, but not all of them have it. Some of them contain these, and they're called plasmids. So this here is a plasmid, as well as this here. And as we already know, bacteria are very small. They're about one one hundredth of a body cell. So we're getting quite small here. And so bacteria have a cell wall, which uh, animals, so your cells, uh, won't have those. A cell membrane, which all cells have. And the cytoplasm, which again, all cells have. That's a jelly-like substance inside the cell. Okay, and you'll need to know these five key parts of a bacterial cell. So please make sure you learn this diagram, if necessary, redraw it elsewhere. So, reproduction. How do bacteria reproduce? Well, first of all, they can infect your body uh, through all different transmission types that we discussed last lesson. So a wide variety of ways for them to enter the body. Once inside the organism, they can reproduce rapidly through something called binary, binary fission. So binary fission is a type of asexual reproduction, okay, and it's a process where one cell copies itself and splits into two. So I'm going to write some notes on this, make sure you're doing this as well. Okay, so one cell copies itself, splits into two identical cells. It's essentially cloning itself. Okay, so there are three shapes of bacteria. Rod, so like a stick. Uh, round, sometimes referred to as coccus, and spiral. So these bacteria make the organism feel ill. Okay, and they do that by producing a toxin. Okay, this toxin is poisonous and it damages the cells and the tissues. So bacteria produce toxins. Now these toxins, there's more than one type of toxin. So uh, there's exotoxins which are secreted and created by the bacteria and endotoxins which stay inside the bacteria. So the endotoxin is the kind that's inside the bacteria and that isn't released until the bacteria is destroyed by the immune system. So sometimes when you get ill, the toxin is produced whilst you're ill. That's an exotoxin. The bacteria is constantly making it whilst it's alive. So that's the kind of illness where you know that you're ill whilst you have it. Uh, other times, the bacteria doesn't release any toxins until after your body starts to kill the cells and until after your body's realised it and you're fighting it. And then that endotoxin is released as the cells are destroyed and uh, that's quite nasty and it can lead to some serious inflammation and it can also lead to sepsis which is very serious uh, and you get that potentially in meningitis. So these toxins, there's more than one type and some of them are dangerous, some of them are very mildly poisonous and others are severely toxic and severely dangerous. So it's a whole spectrum there. So there's some examples that you need to know about. Salmonella, it's a very common type of bacteria. It causes food poisoning. Now it's uh, eaten or transmitted by eating contaminated food. Um, now, and symptoms of this can include fever, stomach cramps, vomiting and diarrhea. It's quite a nasty disease. And in the UK, uh, all our poultry, that's chickens really, and all the birds, are vaccinated against salmonella to control the spread of the disease. So you will notice if you get eggs from the supermarket, 
they will often have a stamp on the egg that says that they've been uh, inoculated against salmonella or it'll be written on the packaging of the eggs. So if you find a pack of eggs at home, have a look to see if it says whether they've been vaccinated against salmonella. They will have been, but it should also tell us that on the packaging. About 20 years ago, uh, we didn't vaccinate against salmonella. And so not only the eggs, but also the uh, chicken uh, was when it was in the supermarket, you could buy it, and if it wasn't cooked properly, you could get salmonella, and that was quite nasty. So the next one is gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is transmitted via sexual contact. So it's, it's classified as an STD, that means a sexually transmitted disease. So somebody who has gonorrhea will find it painful to urinate, and they can also have a thick yellow or green discharge their penis or vagina. So a deeply unpleasant one to have. Uh, it's usually treated with an antibiotic called penicillin. However, um, there are some resistant strains that are harder to treat, as with all, uh, all kinds of bacterial infections, there are usually resistant strains that are harder to treat. Okay, so to prevent transmission, you can use barrier contraception uh, and you can also use antibiotic treatments. So the barrier contraception stops you passing it on. And the antibiotic treatments, um, essentially, they stop you having an active form of the disease and then um, that can be fixed, essentially, that uh, cures it. Okay, so I'm just going to pop in here. There are resistant strains which are hard to treat because there is. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to go to the YouTube video here that's shown here and I'd like you to pop that up and watch the clip and then explain in the student notes page how bacteria can, can, can cause illness. So just a short paragraph, couple of sentences to explain how bacteria can cause illness. Okay, so I'll let you uh, pause the video whilst you do that. So unfortunately, we can't actually do the next activity because this is a practical activity, but um, we'll move on to the hand washing clip. So there is a hand washing clip here, uh, which you don't need to watch because I'm sure you all know now after coronavirus how to wash your hands. And if you were to Google it, you would find probably much better examples on how to wash your hands. If you did go to this clip, please be aware that it starts at 10 minutes and 21 seconds into the video. So don't just start watching it from the beginning or you'll be wasting 10 minutes before you get to the point you need. So your final activity for this lesson is to create a table either on the space on this page or on the student notes page. And uh, unfortunately, there won't be any teacher support. There's plenty of useful information on the internet. If you do need support, please email your teacher. When I say there won't be teacher support, I mean, I'm not going to go through it with you now. What I want you to do is have a go at it yourself. And if you get stuck or you have any questions, email what you've done to a teacher or take a photo and send it to your uh, teacher and they will be able to support you with that activity. So what you need to do here is a table or even just some notes where you detail and ideally comp compare the transmission methods, symptoms, prevention and treatment of salmonella and gonorrhea. So an example of the way to do this would be just to very simply divide your page like so, and you can put salmonella and gonorrhea and then you can have transmission and fill that one in. Uh, symptoms, it's a very quick, very straightforward task and you should be able to do most of this from the lesson content that you already have. Prevention and treatment. So if you create a table such as that, and complete that, please. Well, if you pause the video whilst you do that. Uh, 
Okay, so the next activity is this checkpoint question. Salmonella bacteria are sometimes found in uncooked chicken. Explain how the salmonella bacteria cause you to feel unwell if you eat an infected meat product. So there are three marks for this. So I want to know how the bacteria causes you to feel unwell. And you need to make three marks worth of points, which is at least three points. So pause the video whilst you have a go at that question, please. Okay, so let's go through that then. So you'll need any three of the following four points. First of all, bacteria reproduce rapidly inside the body. So the idea that bacteria multiply or that they recreate a lot of themselves inside the body cells. Then the bacteria release toxins, the second mark. For a third mark, that the toxins are damaging the cells or that they're uh, poisonous or toxic. And lastly, the bacteria can also damage the cells directly. So there's four ways of getting a mark there. So give yourself a mark out of three, because that was out of three. And make sure you write in anything you missed there. Okay, so we're going to move on to the knowledge and application check. So if you could have a go at those questions, please. And then pause the video whilst you do that, and then we'll go through them. Okay, so let's go through that. Question one, define the term microbe. So a microbe is a microorganism. Question two, state what a bacterium has instead of a nucleus. So it has a loop of DNA, or you could have said it has a plasmid. State the three types of bacteria. So there is rod, round, or circular, and spiral. Question four, state two symptoms of salmonella. There are a number of symptoms here, but any two of fever, cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea will get you the mark. If you're struggling with how to spell the word diarrhea, there's a very disgusting uh, mnemonic to help you remember. And that is, does it always run really horribly over each ankle? Quite disgusting, but you will never spell diarrhea wrong or ever again. So does it always run really horribly over each ankle? Very disgusting. But nonetheless, a very good mnemonic to help you remember both what diarrhoea is and how to spell it. Question five. How can gonorrhea be prevented? So uh, we can use antibiotics and barrier methods of contraception such as condoms. Question six, state how salmonella is transmitted. So it's transmitted by the bacteria being on or in the ingested foods. Question seven, define the term health. So we should know this one by now. Health is a state of physical and mental well-being. Question eight, define the term pathogen. So a pathogen is a disease causing microbe. Another one we should be very familiar with by now. Question nine, why is gonorrhea so hard to treat? That is because it is developing a resistance to antibiotics. Question 10. Why should chefs wash their hands thoroughly? Well, we want to remove bacteria from our hands and viruses, to be honest, such as salmonella, so that they aren't transmitted through the chef's dirty hands.
Okay, so question 11. Why should a patient with a communicable disease be placed in isolation whilst in hospital? Well, if they have a communicable disease, communicable disease that is a disease that can be passed on to other people essentially a contagious disease so they are at risk of passing that disease on to other people who are also ill within a hospital environment and you don't want to pass on another illness to someone who is already ill because their immune system is already weakened Okay, so that the idea there is to prevent them getting ill. Okay, so if you could give yourself a mark out of 11, please. And if you got seven or more, you've done very well. If you got nine or more, you're doing exceptionally well. Uh, if you got four or less, you really need to review this lesson um, and make sure that you're a lot happier with what's going on in this lesson so go through that and have another go if you got four or less okay there are some key words in this lesson in addition to a lesson so make sure that you're familiar with what each of these key words mean and that you understand what each of these terms are okay if you have any questions or concerns please email your teacher and i'm sure they'll be very happy to help you thank you very much